Hey guys, welcome back to another video and today I have another piece of Collins Avionics to take apart. This unit here is a ADF receiver that was used in a Beach King Air. So this is an ADF receiver which is a navigational aid that pilots use to compare the aircraft's heading to the direction of a radio beacon that is usually sent out by airports. As you can see, I do actually have the rack that this came in. This is the Collins 390R19 mount. And you can see back here, there's an opening for the connector. On the front here, you can see the fasteners that are used to lock it into the rack. These tighten down and it holds it in place like that. As you can see here the model number is engraved into the rack so they know what box goes into this mount. In the back we have a nice big connector with lots of gold plated pins and a high frequency connector on the bottom here. And we have the usual aluminum case. We have our handle and the information tag here. All right, so let's get this cover off. There are two screws on the back here that allow me to take the cover off. And it slides off, revealing the inside of this. On the inside, we can see this very old looking PCB. And it looks like we also have more PCB cards in this. Here we have five trimmers for adjusting different parameters. Um, we have some capacitors here. These light blue components I also think are capacitors. Um, we have some RCA logic chips here. You can see most of these chips are dated the 30th week of 1979. We have lots of resistors and capacitors on this board. A transistor here, some more capacitors, and we have a what looks like a light bulb, but it might be a slightly different component that is used to protect the circuitry from high voltage spikes. Um, these turquoise components are also capacitors. We have a big component here that looks like a diode it's an inductor. We have only two transistors on this board here and here. This circuit board here that we were looking at is labeled instrumentation. We have another one labeled power supply, synthesizer, and tuner. You can see all these cards here connect into what looks like a back plane here with the main connector on it. And it looks like we have something similar on the front here too. To take out these cards, I have to take out these screws and take off this back plane here. Okay, I've taken the screws off and it should come off. Just like that. We also have a high frequency connector here we need to take off. Here's the board with the gold pins on it. You can see all the metal on here is just the one large ground plane. And we do have some resistors here and that connector goes to the one and only high frequency connector. Okay, now I can pull out this board since it's not screwed in on this side. Here's that board. In the back we can see very old school style traces and we do have lots of corrosion over here in lifting of the traces. The next board is the power supply board, which does require me to take out screws on both sides. Okay, here's the board. You can see we have a big RCA transistor here. And it's on this aluminum piece for heat dissipation. We have lots of big capacitors. Lots more capacitors over here. We have an inductor here 
from a brand called Histronic. We have some gold-plated transistors here, here, and a few more over here. We have one and only logic chip. We have one trimmer here. And these orange components here could be capacitors or inductors. It's kind of hard to tell. They are 10% tolerance. Over here we have a small transformer. And over here we have a shield over some stuff. So let's take that off and see what's underneath. Okay, under the shield we have some more of the same stuff. We have some more capacitors. We have a, another inductor. Um, we have another logic chip here, some more resistors, and a transistor here. Here's the back of the board. You can tell that some of these parts were replaced by these solder joints here. Also, these two for the transistor. So, maybe that was one of the four modifications, was replacing some of these parts, because solder jobs like this is not factory. Next, we're going to take a look at the synthesizer and the tuner. And this does look like they are connected together. And we do have screws to take out for this one. All right, here we go. Um, looks like there's a few covers to take off for this. Let's first start with this one here. Okay, and under here we just have the back of the circuit board. Looks like we do have a lot of chips on this one. Okay, it does look like this is going to just come up just like this, but there is a connector right here that just come undone. Okay, there was actually two high frequency connectors, one here and one here, and those correspond with these two connectors. And on this board, you can see we have a whole bunch of logic chips, including this really nice gold ceramic chip here. These chips here are also dated 1979. And we can see right here our only bodge in this unit. We have this capacitor soldered onto two legs of this chip, and it's glued down with some silicone glue. Um, we have some transistors here. We have another one here, and some more over here. We have lots of resistors over here. We have a crystal oscillator. You can see all the logic chips on this board, which would be doing basic logic to process the data. We have this very funny looking resistor here. Um, here we have a trimmer that is slightly different than the other ones. Over here we have three capacitors stacked up with glue holding the three of them together to keep them from moving around probably. We have some bigger transistors here, gold plated legs. Uh, we have some kind of high frequency box here. You can see we do have some high frequency coax going to it. And there's a film capacitor right there, and it connects to this high frequency connector. And we do have one potted module here on this board. There's our part number, and this one is revision 6. Next I'm going to try to see if I can get this cover off here. There's some screws on the side here and here. I had to take this post off here to access the screws. On this box but when we open it up like this you can see it's potted unfortunately um, so no way to tell what's in there but it does look like there's a, a trimmer here here's the back you can see that the word synthesizer has actually been silk screened onto the board with solder and the part number and these are the nuts here that fasten down this uh, box here. And there's that awesome gold chip again.
probably one of the main logic processors here. All right, so it looks like to reveal this other board, we have to take out these six screws and take off this cover. And that should be our tuner. All right, so here's the board. We can see here, we have these two modules here. This module here is made by Piezo Technology Incorporated. It is 15 megahertz, so probably like a crystal oscillator in there and some other stuff. We have another one here by Surtec Corporation. This one is 3.6 megahertz. On the side here, it's written in and out. We have a logic chip here. We have a few more logic chips. Over here, we have a lot of these capacitors. We have some bigger resistors. There's our coax wire. And here's the other one over here. We have some more resistors and stuff capacitor here. We have some trimmers, another one over here. We have this other little potted box over here. Not really sure what that is. It might be an inductor. We have a oscillator here. Um, these are capacitors, another capacitor, and another chip over here. And up here we have our only transistor on this board. And we have another funny looking diode here. Here's the back of the board. You can see the, the nuts for holding down the modules and the connections. There is two for the input and two for the output. We do have this extra capacitor here. Um, soldered on to one of the sides of this box here. It does look like we do have some kind of parallel circuitry here. Okay, now let's take a look at this module here. Here we have the back plane board here with the gold pins for connecting the different modules together. Looks like this module here will come apart if I take out these three screws and these two here. Okay, I've taken these screws off and this module just comes apart like this into three different sections. Here we have our front cover piece. Here on this module, it looks like we have some power supply stuff. Up here, we've got transistors with capacitors on them. We've got four of those. Um, on this side we have some big power resistors and it looks like we have some more of those light bulb looking components that are for a voltage spike protection. A big resistor here and here and we have these transistors. We have three of them on each side. You can see both sides are pretty much the same and there's a connector. And here's our back plane board. Just like the other one, we have this giant ground plane. It looks like pin five on each of these is ground. And there's our part number. And that's pretty much all there is to this. All right, so that's about it for this ADF receiver. And I hope you guys enjoyed watching, and please like, comment, and subscribe to help support my channel.